Today on the Music Reel, I have Manny, Michael and Mark from the Pushworth Group. And our Hello. special guest today is Mr. Dan Neeby. Now he is the executive producer of Rocking for the Homeless, now in its seven year. Dan, how are you today? Good, thank you. And thank you for having me. Uh, we're really keen to see how you've been going with uh, this incredible experience that we've all had in the event hospitality and music industry. I guess in modern history, this is the first time any of us have experienced something like this. So first and foremost, what have you been doing in lockdown? Okay, so uh, I guess I've actually, I'm going to be totally honest, I've actually enjoyed it. Um, it's okay. been a break. It's been yeah. a break and, and it was unplanned, but I can't whinge anymore about being tired because uh, I've certainly had a big, a big break. I've done lots of reading. I've done lots of writing and music myself. Um, I've fallen totally in love with my fiance over and over every day. So it's been a totally good thing. Um, and yeah, I've been really bored, but look, I've been busy. I've been keeping busy. That's good because I don't know if you've seen our previous episode, but I mean, these three guys have just run. I mean, Manny for 30 years, Michael for 17, Mark for six. And this is the first time that they've actually stopped without the phone ringing. So it's been really good to have that complete stop, like you said, be able to take a breath, to be healthy. Yeah. And I think it's, um, I think it was unplanned and, you know, like the industry's um, reeling and everybody's like out of work overnight, but um, I'm sure a lot of them, once we get through this, will actually um, have enjoyed that break. And I, I, I'm sure that they will, you know. I agree. I think Manny's got a question for you. Hey, Dan, uh, mate, thanks for coming on. I guess, you know, for me as a, you know, we were one time event managers for, you know, some significant Queensland events. So we feel your pain when it comes to putting a festival together. As we filtered out of that particular marketplace, and I guess, we understood that there were, it was a new world then, there were chain, changes, there were compliances, extra public liability insurances, which just yeah. made the whole exercise of running a festival or promoting a festival just not viable. And we're sort of going back maybe now, probably six years ago, since we sort of left that side of the industry. You're now set, like seven years into rocking for the homeless. And I guess you know the compliances and, and like and you know all the costs associated. But with COVID, you know, this whole post COVID situation and actually running a festival, I'm looking at what additional compliances are imposed upon you and how that will impact on the production of your, you know, festival. I think you're touting uh, for the November time frame this year. <clears throat> so how will things change? Well, from our point of view, I guess I guess I should really explain rocking for the homeless a, a little bit business-wise. We're we're a little bit different from you guys. You guys um, you guys have money on on the line. Um, people have money on the line. This is a charity, and we're all volunteers. Um, uh, we don't ever handle the money. We don't ever touch the money. We source sponsorship to pay for the event. So before the doors are open, the whole event's paid for. And that's done via naming rights, sponsorship, um, uh, you know, uh, food trucks, all that sort of thing. So we are lucky in the sense that we don't have a lot on the line. Um, personally, we all put into this 100% six months of the year and make it all work. Um, so from that aspect, we're not under the pump like many other people. We are under the pump because we have to provide a decent festival, um, decent entertainment, good production. All, the, all of the uh, logistics have to be just the same as any other festival. Um, mm -hmm. From what COVID's done for us is, uh, I guess from a sense of where we were lucky this year where we had a massive site given to us free of charge for, wow. Um, wow. it was on June, I think it was June the 12th, uh, from memory, I, can't, I think it was June the 12th we were going to do Rockin' this year and we were gifted a, a $50,000 infrastructure um, to do that. Now, this year, we're planning on going in December, provided the uh, restrictions are lifted and we can have more than 500 people or even if we can only have 200 people, 
we're going to diversify and we're going to do an, a matinee show and we're going to do an, a night show and we're going to split the love and we're going to shorten everything. Um, I, I think, I mean, I, I think, um, I think it's made everybody think properly. And I think, I think this has been a good thing in many ways because I've had plenty of time to think. Our team have had plenty of time to think. Um, the only hiccup that I can see from our point of view is we've had sponsors drop out when everything fell, everything went through and everything changed. Those businesses have been affected. Yeah. Yeah. So sourcing yeah. that sponsorship is going to be our big job yeah. to, yeah. to go ahead. But again, um, I think, you know, there's a lot more things available to everybody. That's great to hear. Mark. Yeah, um, so we are, we, are, we are very fortunate. And look, I mean, I've been in the industry since I was 16 years old and failed in so many ways and, and, and succeeded in many. And um, I don't think I've got the, the balls to actually go out and do a festival like you guys do or, or these guys that are doing that stuff because, I mean, I've stressed, we've all gone through this. I, I, I want everything to be simple. So I've decided to use my knowledge and my team's knowledge and all of us as a group to just put that into one event a year. Let's just help out and do that stuff and then move on and do our own things. So um, we're fortunate that way. Um, fantastic. 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 Mark. Um, Dan, I guess I have to ask a question from the community sort of point of view. Um, obviously running for seven years now, you've got a lot of, lot of long-term fans that, are, you know, that love the event and come each year. What can, what can the average punter do to, to sort of keep, keep the balls rolling and keep you know, these festivals in the long term happening? Yeah, good question. Look, here in Redcliffe, we're very fortunate because um, Redcliffe supports the Breakfast Club and the Breakfast Club are, again, 100% volunteers. Nobody gets paid. Um, and they, they are just, you know, they've been going for 16 years now and um, the community gets behind that. Rocking for the Homeless is part of the Breakfast Club. I am a volunteer for the Breakfast Club, as everybody else is. So the average punter um, here is very supportive. Uh, the community at large is very supportive of this event. It is a Redcliffe event. And I guess from our point of view, we can be proud of that, is that we've created an annual uh, music event that, that helps a cause. And, um, uh, and, the, and the people get behind it massively. That's so good to hear because I think this whole experience, it's bringing people into a local perspective and you've already got that set up. So I guess, you know, that's what we're really, when we're talking to everyone, we're hearing all over the world, it's the focus is now on a local community, keeping that local connection happening. So yeah. that's really what Rocking for the Homeless has been about the entire time anyway. So you're mm -hmm. one step ahead of everyone else. You've already adapted yeah, so, and that's a good thing because, um, you know, it's such a touchy subject, charity gigs, and it's so, you know, it can be so, you've, you've just got to keep an eye on everything um, because, you know, if anything goes wrong, you can, you, you know, you can just imagine what would have to happen. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, if anything went south in any way, shape or form, this is a small country town. We're, we've got to, we've got to live here. So, and Brisbane in, in itself. Um, so, there's so many, so many people involved and so many, um, um, it's just grown. I mean, I used to do everything myself for three years and, and now slowly, you know, three <laughs> people come in and now our team is like 12 people and it's just amazing. And everyone's got their roles. Everyone is in charge of something. So, and that's community spirit. And, you know, you're right, Nicola, is, um, is that one thing this has done is brought the community together. Like we've got so many things out here, regardless of music, if we've got Facebook pages that if anyone needs anything, this community just jumps on it. I'm, I'm sure you guys do it where you are too. Yep, we do. We do. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, Dan, I really like hearing your positivity in this time. And, you know, there's, there's obviously so many different stories of, in, in different people have encountered, you know, all different scenarios. Where does all the positivity come from? <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, yeah, so, um, well, look, at you know, alcohol didn't affect me when we went into lockdown. I was an alcoholic already, so um, <laughs> it was all good. But, look, 
you've got to be positive, Michael. You've got to be positive. Yeah. You've got to be creative. You've got to be, um, you know, leaders, anyone handling something. I mean, you lose your shit. Everyone's going to lose their shit. You've got to be positive. You've got to be on the game, on the A game. Um, and, I mean, I learned to be positive from many people. Um, Manny, you're one of them. Um, you've always, whenever I've, we've had some conversations that have been um, uh, volcanic, but you've always remained calm and you've been one of those people. And even I remember we went for a flight to Sydney not long ago. Um, just your positivity on things, mate. And, and um, you know, I learned lots of things from Marshall Cullen, all those people that I tour with and things. And being positive is, uh, it breeds positivity. You'd be negative and a thousand times yeah. negative energy is going to come. You'd be positive and you'll get a million times. So yeah. just got to be positive, mate. That's good. It's good to hear. It's good to, it's good to see positive, you know, good to see positive people out there. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think yeah. um, your story is quite inspirational for all of us. Seven years, Rocking for the Homeless, an event that's run by volunteers. Um, it's yeah. a pretty yeah. huge achievement. Incredible. So uh, we're quite proud to be associated with you, Dan, with this event. Yeah. With all the work. And thank you, you so do. much. Yeah, well, Pushworth's been a part of that. So, you know, you guys have been been there and um, and we've all sort of grown together on this. So I do appreciate your positive and, um, and words and good on you guys too. I see you guys are being very positive and creative um, on um, social media wise as well. And that's a great thing. We're trying to stay connected with everyone because everyone's got a story to tell. Everyone is going through their own lockdown uh, experience. Mm -hmm. And then it's out, once you're out of lockdown, you know, what can possibly change in our industry? It's unlimited with events and hospitality and music. So as you say, having a very firm vision and trying to keep that focus positive is the best way to just step into this unknown world together. None of us know what we're facing. We know it's going to be different. So the only way we can do it, like you said, is just to keep that, that ray of sunshine hanging over here to get us through because we don't know what's coming. That's the only way to no. do it. No, yeah. and that's, that's true. That's so yeah. true. Well, Dan, look, it's been great to talk to you today. I'll put all the links for everyone for Rocking for the Homeless so that they can support it when it actually happens in December. We wish you all the very best, my friend, and please take care in this very insane time. But... I'm glad that, like, we, we all feel a bit more positive today after speaking to you. So thank you for that. And I'll leave all it right, there. Thank you, guys. Bye, everyone. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Thank you. Later, guys.